10 years in the making, the greatest leap since we created CUDA, and computer graphics will never be the same again. If you saw my NVIDIA Turing architecture video, you will know all about real-time ray tracing and how it relates to RTX. What I want to do in this video is to look more in detail at real-time ray tracing and to see how it actually plays out in the gaming environment. So what I want to do is to look at a couple of demos which feature RTX and actually what it looks like in a real game environment. But before we get started, I want to just give a brief explanation of what exactly real-time ray tracing is. The best way of describing it is that in gaming is going to be a hybrid of both ray tracing and traditional gaming graphics. NVIDIA call this hybrid rendering. The best way of explaining it in full is to actually show you a presentation. I'm going to be a bit cheeky and show you an explanation of this process from AMD. Rasterization and ray tracing are two approaches to the main tasks when rendering a 3D image, namely visibility and shading. Rasterization uses approximation of how light behaves to decide how 3D objects will look on screen. This method allows for fast rendering and high frame rates. Ray tracing solves the problem of shading a 3D object, or tracing a ray by modeling complex light interactions. Ray tracing is computationally expensive, resulting in longer render times. Video games normally rely on rasterization to achieve smooth gameplay. Professional 3D renders mostly use ray tracing to achieve photorealistic results. Radeon ProRender now combines the benefits of both approaches by rasterizing basic structures and surfaces before ray tracing is used to compute light effects like reflections and shadows. This means that viewers end up getting great image quality combined with superior performance and speed. And IDOS Montreal to bring real-time ray traced shadows to shadows. Now we know the meaning of hybrid rendering. We can look at a couple of games that actually use hybrid rendering. The first one is this game here, which is called Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And this was demoed at Gamescon. As you can see, what we're seeing here is a nighttime scene with RTX not on. And we're going to see RTX turned on just now. And the shadows are going to change. And the discussion around this particular scene was how RTX can change the shadows. So let's put RTX to the test and have it just do it for us. Now, what you've just seen is a change in the shadows. We've got lights moving around. We've got area shadows. And apparently this is something which is really, really, really difficult to do with traditional techniques. Now, personally, I've got to say, I wasn't really able to appreciate this particular demonstration. It just seemed to me you had one scene that looked very similar with another scene. So, I think in this particular scene, maybe the developers were getting a little bit more excited about the technology than the average gamer uh, is going to be. Another demonstration, which unfortunately I haven't got a copy of, was this game, which is called Metro Exodus. You can see it's a really, really creepy uh, environment. And what they wanted to do was to get the environment to be dimly lit. But unfortunately, with traditional techniques, you can't really get the high dynamic range that you need to have really dark shadows where really creepy things can begin to happen. So the aim here of real-time ray tracing is to create a more realistic, more sinister scene. And I think I began to really understand how real-time ray tracing can be used in the storytelling uh, part of game design when I saw how this could be used to create dark, dingy nooks and crannies which could be used to frighten the game player. And we then see the environment, we can see that... The and what we're looking at here is actually a game called Battlefield 5. This is a first-person shooter. I don't think it will look like this. There won't be the slow motion in actual gaming. And what I've tried to do is to show you what it looks like with the real with ray tracing on and off because that's what they're demonstrating here but I'm going to have a different video I'm gonna have a link to a different video where you actually see the shooters perspective where you actually see gameplay taking place so you can see this is pretty cinematic 
it shows the director's angle, the director's point of view. And with RTX on, you can see we've got beautiful reflections. We, we've got beautiful imagery. But with RTX off, we lose a lot of stuff. We lo lose a lot of the context. This actually becomes even clearer in the next scene. As it goes away, but because ray tracing just works, you just get the expected result, how you think you'd see it. So, the next thing we have to show you is... And I'm going to have a link to this video as well, because I think it's well worth watching. Here, what we see is a tank firing, and then we see a flamethrower. And with the RTX on, as it is now, you can see the flame, you can see the flame being reflected in the ground. And it looks really immersive. It looks like you're actually there. You can kind of feel the heat almost. And it's not, it doesn't matter where, where you're looking. But with RTX off, you completely lose it. You just lose all the context. So the RTX is allowing better reflections, better shadows, better lighting. And I think this particular demonstration was the one that really impacted and got me to sense how the developers are actually seeing our uh, real-time ray tracing as an artistic technology, as a technology that will add to their ability to do artistic stuff inside the game design. Here again, when the RTX goes off, it's a completely different scene. It, it feels very different. If you have seen my NVIDIA Turing architecture video, you will know that RTX is not just uh, about ray tracing, it's also about artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence is where the gaming performance is going to come in. Uh, I think if you really want to understand how this ray tracing, which is very computing intensive, is going to impact actual gameplay, seeing that video will kind of help you to understand what the artificial intelligence can do and i've already covered to some extent how artificial intelligence impacted the frame rate in a, another game where we were able to get 60 frames per second with a 4k presentation well for the very first time because of this because we could take a lower resolution image and because we could train a neural network with all kinds of super high resolution and super high quality images, this neural network, if runs on a bad out of hell processor called a tensor core, could then in real time enhance images. In real time, generate pixels it had never seen before. Generate pixels that make sense to go there because if you, were to, you and I were to look at it, we would know what makes sense to go there. And therefore, it makes sense that we could teach a neural network how to make sense of what pixels to put there. So let's, I'm going to show you something. This is Infiltrator running on one GPU at 78 frames per second in 4K at a quality that has never been seen before. A 1080 Ti, the fastest GPU in the world, can currently do about 30-something. Okay? From 30-something, what you're about to see is 4K. Now, I'm going to lock it to 60 hertz because this display happens to be V-synced. And so you're going to see the frame rate on top. And ideally, it's pretty high. Very first time to see Infiltrator running at 60 hertz. It'll be interesting to see whether gamers actually respond very well in the long term to the to the technology. I've seen quite a lot of responses so far, and it seems, you know, 
to some extent, I think the gamers are not that interested in the shadows and the reflections. I think maybe when some of the improvements coming in from artificial intelligence really begin to kick in, I think that's when gamers might be a little bit more interested. But that's going to be it for this video. Follow the links in the description to see the original videos. They're quite interesting. I just wanted to share this with you because I thought it was really, really um, an interesting insight. Hit the like button, share the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.